me from this text, continuing to rejoice the birth of salvation. Amen. You may be seated. Continuing to rejoice the birth of salvation. Gracious Lord, we thank you once again for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity in this time, Lord, that you have made available that we may share with others your word to bring light to the darkened path that we have, that is so prevalent before us today. That, Lord, that I may decrease while you increase, that you may be seen by this message, that it, it may be known by all of those who are within the sound of my voice that you sent it. This is our prayer now, Lord, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he leads me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the wind Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he leads me safely to the blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the love. We're going to go through that, that will be tossed and turned by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast, unmovable, despite the tides. But if the storms, they don't cease. And just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Yeah. In the Lord. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. Y'all keep saying that for me. Bills may roll. My breakers may dash. I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark the day. Clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because my Jesus is nigh. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored, my soul is anchored, oh, my soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
way up there where I couldn't get there, but thank y'all for being patient with me. Because at the end of the day, the message is, you want your soul anchored. You want your soul anchored. Not in me, and if I can sing, but in the Lord. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. As we had went over and gave a thought, continuing to rejoice in the birth of salvation, Christmas as we know it today is the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, which occurred over 2,000 years ago. The word Christmas translated means mass of Christ. One theory about establishing the winter celebrations to the celebration of the birth of Christ is that the Roman Empire, Constantine, Amen. who converted to Christianity, wanted to incorporate the pagan winter, winter rituals or celebrations together with the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. In this way, Constantine hoped to help both pagans and Christians celebrate together. Many believe that this is the reason for celebrating the birth of Christ on December 25th. Eventually, the Roman church became more successful in making December the reason for the celebration about the birth of Christ, yes, sir. replacing any celebration celebrations that were in honor of these pagan gods. Yes, you, know, you know, we have an incorporation today of what is called holidays. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about it for a minute, holidays, Valentine's Day is a holiday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then they call Easter a holiday. Then they call Sweetie's Day a holiday. Now watch this. They call Halloween a holiday. And then they want to incorporate that with Christmas to say holiday. Well, see, what, 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 what Constantine's vision was, was to, you know, to separate the pagan from the Christian. Therefore, lifting up Christ. And that's, that's, that, that's, that's the reason... We wanted to talk about this today. Well. Now, 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 the history I was able to research concerning this man Simeon, or Simon, is that he resided in Jerusalem uh -huh. and was prominent for his relationship and communion with God. Well. Some theologians who have had conversations with early Jewish writers discovered that at this time, Simeon, a man of great note in Jerusalem wow. was the son of Halil and the first to receive the title of rabbi, wow. which in Hebrew means spiritual leader of a Jewish congregation and that he's also qualified to expand or to expound and to apply Jewish law. Yeah. Now, as was, this was the highest title of his profession. And it was only given to seven men during Simeon's era. Imagine that. Now, he succeeded his father, Hillel, as president of the college which his father founded, or the, the educational institution that his father founded, which was one of those educational facilities that was utilized by the great Sanhedrin. Wow. And to know anything about the, the history of the, the religious order and structures, the Sanhedrin were very powerful men in the in Jerusalem oh, yeah. and in the religious world. Amen. Oh, yeah. So 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 he was the president of this this educational facility. Wow. And, and and the Jewish people believed that he was given the qualities or the abilities of prophetical of a prophetical spirit, and that he was later cast out of the place of high regard because he witnessed against. The common. You know, we've got a lot of common in the church today. Hey, come on now. Come on now. He, he, he witnessed against the common. we got a lot of common in the place where we worship the Lord today. And, and since he spoke against that, or earthly opinions. You know, our common or earthly opinion says, well, hey, I'm right no matter what. Even though I'm wrong, I'm right. Don't get quiet on me, y'all. Now, 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 and this, these, 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 these discussions... 
and this de debate was because the Jews didn't, they, they, even though they had heard, they were not in, in accordance with the coming of the kingdom of the Messiah. Well, Okay, God Almighty. And, 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 and yet, they were willing to sit under his teaching, but they were also willing to argue and debate with him and set him out, put him out to, to you know how they put you out the pasture? Yeah. 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 I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on. Yeah. One, 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 one additional point of interest about this man, and y'all listen to this now, is that it was reported that his son was Gam Gamaliel. Yeah. And if you know anything about scripture, Gamaliel was a Pharisee and he was the one that oversaw the trial of Jesus. I know you did, Come on now. And, 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 you know, this is contrary to modern day thinking because modern day thinking is, well, if, the, if, if my daddy a pastor, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be this in the church and I'm going to be that. Yeah, amen. Amen. But, 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 but contrary to this thinking, amen, it's not a new thing because remember now, Simeon, was devoted to God. Tell us, Gamaliel, his son, was against God. Right. So, so it's not uncommon for a son or a daughter of a highly regarded person who had a sincere heart towards God to have an opposite spirit of their father. Right. Well, now, just to tighten that up a little bit, go check it out. Check out, and I think it's. Judges, or is it in Samuel? It's probably Samuel. Yeah. Eli had two sons. Yes, sir. And he, Eli wanted his two sons to operate in his stead as the judge or the prophet. Yes. Wow. But they were evil, and God told them to sit them down. And look at what people do today that Eli did a long time ago. He wouldn't sit them down. That's Amen. my son. I'm moving on here. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm moving on. But 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 you see our disobedience to God. Amen. See, we want to do what we want to do. That's what that's what uh, 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 Simeon had a debate with about the, with the children of Israel. And because the, he was telling them what was right, but the world wants to do what's wrong. <laughs> and we'll get upset with you if you even attempt to engage or walk in that path. Amen. Well, Amen. I'm going to move on here. Stay with me for a moment. Amen. It is noted in this text that he was just and devoted just towards men and he was devoted to God. Well, This mindset must always be joined together. We should always have that mindset that to be just or to be fair with one another well, and be devoted to God. Amen. Are you with me? It is also noted that he waited for the consolation. You know, consolation. You know, sometimes we need to be consoled, don't we? Mm -hmm. Help me now. But and he was waiting on that consolation. Yeah. But in that consolation was some salvation. Help me, somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, and that consolation of Israel. That is, he was waiting for the coming of the Messiah, <laughs> in whom alone the nation of Israel, and they were being miserably harassed and oppressed. During this time frame, and we'll get into that. But they sure enough needed some consolation. Yes, sir. Oh, good God Almighty. The fact that he waited can be due to his dedication to the word of the Lord, of which he was an instructor. Well, Surely, he would have had knowledge of the words of Isaiah, found in Isaiah 53, 1 through 10. Yes. And that says, I'm going to just read the first verse. And I'm going to let y'all go and read the rest of it. And that's Isaiah 51, 53, 1 through 10. The first verse tells the story about society. It says, Who hath believed our report? Yes, sir. And whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed the report? How many times has the preacher gotten up here and told you about the Lord? Who's believing the report? How many preachers get in pulpits all over the city, all over the nation? Now, if you, if you give an inspired message for inspiration... Yes, Lord. But if you start telling them about what thus said the Lord. Come on. He not only believed the word of the Lord, he was also attentive to the Holy Spirit. And he trusted him. He trusted that Holy Spirit. It was not stated how old he was, but he knew that the Lord's word would occur before he made his transition. He was not only thankful for witnessing this monumental event, 
He rejoiced because of it. During the time frame from the close of Malachi and the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, over 400 years had passed without a word from the Lord to the children of Israel. Imagine that. For Simeon, at this time, this word from the Lord after all of this time was significant and worthy of all his praise. After all that time, the Holy Spirit came and told him. 400 years had passed, but a message came to him by way of the Holy Spirit. Well, saying that you're going to see my salvation before you leave here. Oh, good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. We have entered an age. Well, first of all, Simeon, for Simeon, this word from the Lord after all this time was significant and worthy of praise. We have entered an age today where the significance of the word of the Lord regarding Christ, our salvation, and the one whose birth is celebrated, that was central, was the central theme of the season, has been overshadowed by the commercializi commercialization of the season and other religious tenets that do not align with the traditional Christian beliefs. Mm -hmm. well. Surely the time warrants time with family and friends and even the exchange of gifts. But the consideration of who should be truly celebrated appears to be to have taken a back seat and in some cases has been altogether taken out. Amen. There have been many challenges to the display of the Christian nativity scene where it can be seen publicly by anyone as they walk by. Well. Yet somebody gets offended. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Somebody gets offended. Now, this has been going on in America for how long? But all of a sudden, it's offensive. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was, I, was, you know, I was on the Internet, and I shared with my wife the other day that there was some young people that had did a presentation of the cherished song, Silent Night, Holy Night. The children did a wonderful presentation, but the instructors decided to eliminate any reference to Jesus what? and his virgin mother in the song in an effort to avoid offending other religious beliefs. Amen. Amen. And, and there's, been a, there's been a little bit of an uproar about it, too. But this act, we actually heard the song. Amen. They took out Jesus and his mother out of the song. And were singing this song and singing Silent Night, Holy Night. Oh. Who would have anticipated that such a precious and traditional belief in Christ would be so debated in our time. Because it was noted that Simeon was cast from his position and prominence within the community, it was revealed that he too encountered challenges and opposition in the hope of this great event given from heaven. Did you catch that? Simeon was challenged about Jesus. Well, Are you with me? And that was 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Simeon was not deterred by these challenges, but he focused on the promise of the Lord by the Holy Spirit. He proclaimed that he was ready whenever the time of his transition came because he had seen the salvation of not only Israel, but of, for all of mankind. This celebration of the birth of this salvation is a central theme throughout Christianity dating back to the time of Constantine, the Roman emperor, and even beyond as seen in our text today with Simeon. In the text, Simeon states, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. Well, the rejoicing merited for this day and time should be even more jubilant today. Yeah. More than in times past due to the volatility and rage that is so prevalent in our society today. Mm. It should also be noted that Simeon was content in the hope that he would see this salvation. Yeah. And all have a promise that this same salvation will appear again. Well, oh, y'all ain't catching me. Which should also be the hope of this day. Instead of hoping to get something, we ought to be hoping that we see Jesus. Help me, somebody. We, ought, we, we need to stop the setting aside or disregard of the significance of this day 
uh, because it is the basis of our Christian belief, which, uh, if we do this, <coughs> it will negate the beginning of the foundation of salvation. Amen. And it will endanger many who do not have knowledge of this event yeah. and eliminate the, the hope that they could have in his return. Yeah. Today, today, many do not have the knowledge of why this birth should be celebrated. They don't know that John 3 and 16 and 17 tells us, for, yeah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah, it goes on to say, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Help me somebody. Because of the transition of the pulpit messages to a more positive inspirational presentation, the presentation of this salvation's pre-existence and his departure from heaven to complete his Father's will is diminished or discouraged. Well, uh, continue to rejoice and celebrate his birth because he had a challenge before him yes. that many today would not accept. Yes. Rejoice because as he considered the challenge and the reason for his birth, yes. he decided to enter a garden called Gethsemane yes. to pray, hoping an alternative solution could be found. But knowing his purpose, well. he stated, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup. Well. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. Tell me, Lord, remember his birth because this good man was arrested and judged by evil men. Having many false allegations large against him. Mm -hmm. Yet he would not respond to the injustice of his, his accusers. The purpose of his birth should never be overshadowed because he had to endure an agonizing beating. He had to endure being tormented throughout the night, accepting this for your sins and mine. Well, don't don't forget his goodness as those did when given an opportunity right. to choose between him and a man that would rob them and commit murder in their community. Well, remember and rejoice and remember the day of his birth because this provides us the cross, that piece of wood that he had to carry up a hill called Golgotha. Yes. Remember his birth because it paved the way for salvation through him. It provides us forgiveness before his father and it fulfills his own words found in John 12 and 32. We said, and I, if I be lifted from the earth, uh -huh. We'll draw all men, not some men, not just a few men, but all men under me. Remember him because after all this abuse and mistreatment, he made a special request on our behalf, stating, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Remember him. Remember his body being placed in a tomb that belonged to another man. Yes, sir. Rejoice and celebrate his birth because its purpose was revealed three days later. Help me now. For at this point, his father revived life to his body and raised yes. him up from the dead for the purpose of salvation, for the purpose of our reconciliation, for the purpose of making intercession on our behalf, because there was no other way we could approach or appeal to God except through 
the birth of Jesus. Oh, y'all, I wish I had a witness. As we celebrate this day that has been accepted as the day of his birth, spend some time reading your scriptures. And you'll find the purpose of his birth as it relates to mankind. And why it should never be overshadowed. Why it should never be sung, and songs should be sung, and, and exclude him in the song. Amen. Lifting him up. Why Christendom should stand its ground. You know, they got laws all across the country about stand your ground. Well, when are the Christians going to stand their ground? Oh, good God Almighty. For Christ, not retreat due to the pressure of others' belief. We'll back a Christian, them will back up in a heartbeat. They backed up to everything, alternative lifestyles, everything. They just keep on backing up. Christian, them don't open them up. And Christ is still sitting there pleading on your behalf. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Continue to celebrate the birth of salvation because it includes our own salvation. And the scripture confirms this in John 14, 6 and 7. So Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. When we see Jesus in our heart, we see the Father. Oh, good God Almighty. Finally, we need to remember this birth. Remember what was spoken in John 3, 16 to 17. It said, for God so loved the world. It didn't say that the world so loved God. Are you with me? For God so loved the world. I had somebody ask me a question before I finish this up. How much love is in the word S-O? And when somebody can figure that out, you tell me. How much love is in the word S-O? So. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. God didn't send him to condemn us, to judge us. He sent them so that the world through him how are we going to exclude him if we've got to go through him? Oh, I wish I had a witness. That, 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 that you might be saved. And, and, and my wife was telling me she had a conversation with someone. And you, we've got to remember Romans. There's a copy of it right here, the Roman Road. Romans 8, I think it is. Oh, Romans 10, 9, and 10. For if you would confess with your mouth, who? 